This video is sponsored by PotownStore.com, the best place to get yourself some TCG code cards. They are compatible with TCG Live and you can of course get everything on the website for 5% off using the coupon code ZAPDOISTCG. This video is also sponsored by CardMarket.com. This is a European platform where you're able to uh, buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. I personally use it every single day and you can do it as well. And you can use the referral name ZAPDOISTCG to help support the channel. This video is also sponsored by YourPlayMat.com. Uh, this is a platform where you're able to, of course, create your own custom playmat. They have, of course, uh, capabilities to ship worldwide and you can get 10% off by clicking the link down below. So definitely check it out. Last but not least is Dragon Shield, the best brand to protect your beautiful cards you can of course uh yeah there's links down below for us and european people and you can of course get your best quality uh, sleeves uh, available as well as deck boxes and binders thanks so much for sticking around with the commercials i hope you enjoyed today's upload if you do be sure to let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button and uh, yeah let's get this video going What's up YouTube, it's Zandu's TCG Hero. Welcome back to our TCG video on my channel. On this channel you get daily Pokemon TCG uploads, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any uh, upcoming videos. Today we're gonna to be checking out the results of the Charlotte Regionals. And uh, there's a lot to be taking a look at, to be honest, because, uh, yeah, these are going to be the top 16 deck lists we're going to be checking out. But also the meta share was kind of interesting. Uh, we did see that Roaring Moon actually was on the uh, charts during day one. And that's actually uh, something we haven't seen before. So that's pretty good. Uh, also, uh, Gardevoir dropped down to 7% meta share in day one. So not a lot of people are too hyped on Gardevoir currently. Lots of Iron Hands, turn one shenanigans, probably something to do with it. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at the deck list. And uh, in particular, we're going to be taking a look at uh, what uh, differentiates these lists from lists that we've already seen. So if you guys are hyped for it, let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button as it helps support the channel in many, many ways. So as we see here, the, the winning list, uh, Vinny Fernandez, a well-known player, player from Brazil, Took it all down here with, of course, Lawson Giratina. So Giratina winning back-to-back -back regionals is insane. Also, we should notice that Charlotte regionals was the biggest regionals of all time over in the West. 2,133 masters, if I'm not mistaken. So that's actually kind of crazy how much the game has grown throughout the years. Uh, with that being said, Charizard and uh, Lost Zone Giratina were the most popular decks and uh, Mirada was also around but didn't have the greatest conversion rate, dropping uh, a lot during the day 2 conversion. So uh, that's kind of interesting, let's be honest. Uh, Mirada is also always a deck that pops up in high numbers but doesn't convert all that well. And uh, yeah, decks that have seemed to be died off a little bit like something like a Chimpao also didn't do that well. So let's just take a look at the... Like, currently we are at uh, ptcglegends.com. A website where they already have a couple of lists available and uh, we can take a look at the top 32 list but uh, and more in particular it's gonna be the top 16 here so Vinny Fernandez what do we see here what is a uh yeah, noteworthy here is that they're playing one copy of Avery. You don't see that uh, a lot in Lost on Giratin. Actually, not at all. It's the first time that I've seen this. I also should note is that they also play four switch cards and uh, no escape rope. So uh, the switch cards definitely help out against uh, yeah opposing uh, Lost Box players that want to sprinkle your comfies and stuff. You can uh, negate that and uh, with the switch cards here and there. It also means that uh, if people are adapting this exact 60 that they might become trapped with a uh, Giratina V-Star at one point because there are no regular switches in here. Uh, of course, uh, Jet Energy is around, but uh, we did see that uh, the list was actually was a very cl crazy uh, close game against Snorlax Block just because of uh, reasons like that. But anyhow, four path to the peak also part of this deck. So uh, that's actually something sometimes people are debating. Three copies is enough. Uh, four copies uh, probably uh, did better here and uh, because is, we're in a format where a lot of uh, abilities are being used. So this is the exact 60. No Hisui and Heavy Bob. Uh, there's still a lot of one-ups. One Crown Rant, one Sable, so we need to be very careful with Law Zoning the stuff, but uh, we did see before that Law Zone Giratina was able to win the regionals, and now uh, back to back, so crazy. Next up is uh, Caleb Rogerson with Charizard, Arvinzard. This actually is uh, a Vanilla 60. We see the Rotom, we see the Lomenian V. Uh, people actually dropped down in the early phases of the Arvinzard builds, they dropped down the Radianzard, but now it has been incorporated back into the deck. This list is also not playing Vitality Band, instead going for the one-off Choice Belt. Choice Belt does help out uh, with numbers, uh, more in particular against Giratina. Let's say they've taken, uh, how how that actually go? Where uh, you're actually slapping 270 when they've taken three prize cards, but uh, that can actually become like a, a 
one hit KO because of that choice belt. Could also work in different situations where uh, you can have the choice belt to early lead and knock out a Rotom in a mirror match. There's a lot of things that could be happening with that choice belt, so very interesting to see. No Vitality Band, no Defiance Band. There is TM Devolution in here, which definitely helps out in the mirror match, but also can work uh, wonders against stuff like a Chimpa. Let's say they've burned like candy and stuff. They can like devolve them and, uh, and you can also like target down the backscatterers. That's also uh, one of the uh, deck's worst matchups to be honest. But uh, it's a very uh, known 60. The uh, stadium count is like two Artisan, one Collapse. Sometimes people throw in a Lost City here and there, but they didn't do that in this particular 60. Only six energies, but they do have the two Super Alts. So that's something you have to be known uh, with using uh, a Charizard deck is that sometimes you might run out of steam, actually, because you're running out of energies, but you do have the Super Alt. And with Pidgeot EX, with the Quick Search, searching out anything you want, you're going to be doing miracles with a list like this. One Counter Catcher, three Bosses, or sometimes they're flip-flopping where they're add adding in a second copy of Countercatcher. And uh, with Arvin, you can actually get that Force Seal Stone to get easily access to Battle VIP Pass. There is, uh, yeah, this is Professor's Research. Don't get, uh, like, mistaken. It's not Professor Turo. Even though it, it is Turo on the artwork, it is actually Professor's Research as a one-off in here. So Arvin's Art uh, getting a second place here at the Charlotte Regionals with Caleb Rogerson. Not a lot I could uh, personally change about this list. This looks very solid going into the next tournament over in Liverpool. Alright, with that being said, we have Gustavo Wada, a top player from Brazil again, insane player. Look at his uh, resume already, he has dominated a lot of tournaments, so now we see him back here at the Charlotte Regionals with Gardevoir. Gardevoir, as we all know, is a very consistent deck because of refinement, because of Shining Arcana, because of the Raiding Greninja with the Concealed cards. Uh, they went for a Vanilla 60, there's one Screamtail in here, one Zacian V, so they're not uh, wandering around with Luxurious Cape or anything like that. Also, I do see there's no Cresselia in here, but they do have Jirachi to help protect them from potential uh, yeah, loss boxes that want to sprinkle damage. Also, inherently helps out against Rapid Strike Urshifu, which is seemingly not performing all that well, even though it, it looks like solidly positioned, but uh, Guard for Metal Metashare also dropped down a little bit, I suppose. So uh, we do see High Mount of Iono, Research, Worker, and uh, there is uh, three Stadium Bumps on top of the Worker. You do have the Lost Vacuum, there is Collapse Stadium, and there is Artisan. So if you're wondering, oh, uh, I'm, I'll be trapped with Path to the Peak. Well, Path to the Peak, Roxanne can be very crippling, but you do have the Draw Power with Refinement and the uh, Shining Arcana to draw yourself out of that nasty situation. So uh, a very uh, vanilla 60, not a lot I would change here. This is looking uh, very good for sure. Then we have fourth place Ryan Miller. We did test this list out yesterday on the channel. It was a, a very high rolling deck in my opinion, where you're uh, preying on your electric generators to hit. You can have a turn one iron hands off very easily because of the help of Peony pushing you to find those electric generators. You have four seal stone which you can easily find with Town Store to then find Electric Generator as well, or your double Turbo Energy. So pretty, pretty much this list is turn one Iron Hands, turn two Iron Hands as well, because you have EXP share on top of it. Uh, there's only a 1-1 one, one Flaffy in here, and uh, the thing I had trouble with when playing this 60 is that uh, you don't run super all. So sometimes when you have to squack away uh, one of your Flaffy pieces, it really, really hurts because uh, you cannot get them back. And uh, yeah, sometimes you do run out of energies with a list like this. There's only 15 energies, you might think only 15 50. I've seen list with the Peony build running as high as 18 energies in total. This is uh, running 15. You do have the double turbo energy, so that means a generator only needs to hit like uh, like two energies, so for your Iron Hands to start swinging. But yeah, I think it's a little bit high rolly, uh, and also uh, with Pokemon Catcher, uh, the coin flip lock needs to be uh, by your side. Okay, with that being said, we have Alex Shemansky with the uh, Sables Art. Sables Art is a deck that is always seemingly around in the format uh, ever since like uh Lost Origins came out, like the combination is there. Uh, you do have access to uh, the Sableye, the power of the Lost Mine. If people are not playing Jirachi, you're gonna have a lot of fun with that, the opponent not. Uh, there's Cramoran to spit on your opponent to just take easy prize card on weak HP Pokemon, for example, Pidgey, uh, Charmander, opposing Comphase, etc. So that's actually pretty strong. Drapion for the Mew V Max matchup, and uh, this list is running high amounts of consistency with four Switch Guard, four Escape Rope, and uh, 
uh, you can also have a, a yeah a retreat option because of beach guard with the vacuums you can even get to like a turn two sable way easier and that's super scary and then the mid to late game radiant zard can get recovered with the clara you can even activate a raihan there to activate uh, the charizard a little bit sooner so you can have raihan double turbo energy of the turn so you can attack as soon as the opponent has taken two prize cards which is the best way to respond to an iron hands that uh, yeah comes out on turn one so there's that. So uh, very vanilla Sable Zard, not a lot of spicy text in here. It's just Drapion from UV Max, and that's about it. Sometimes you do see, oh, we're playing Ditto in here for that uh, additional start with Deconfe. Sometimes you see a third uh, Sableye in here as well. Uh, there are things that uh, you might adapt, but the TM Devolution is what wins you the Charizard matchup, if you were wondering. With that being said, 6th place goes uh, Isaiah Bradner with uh, Lost Zone Giratina. They did implement in the Spirit Tomb this time around because Spirit Tomb is helping out a ton. And it seems like uh, most of the uh, Mew lists that I have seen uh, currently are DTE built. So I would say like the ratio is like 60% DTE built, 40% Fusion built. So Spirit Tomb was a nice... Uh, Solid choice for this tournament. Uh, you do see they are only playing three copies of Path to the Peak and only two water energy. So attacking with Greninja is a little bit less likely. But they do have, of course, uh, yeah, the additional switch. Like there's like two switch card, three switches, and four, uh, yeah, jet energies here. So very, uh, yeah, vanilla. And it's not like kind of vanilla because there's a second copy of Sableye in there. So a little bit more emphasis on the Sableye in this list. All right, uh, Ross Cotton is uh, doing miracles with its Roaring Moon deck. I probably think it's the same 60 that we've seen before. Uh, I, I think there's a little bit of a difference. It could be a little bit different, but I think in Portland, they've also played Roaring Moon. Um, yeah, it was uh, Ross. Ross Cotton with... Uh, I think it's going to be something similar to, to this 60, if I'm being honest. Uh, it looks... Like, uh, what they would have played if they did it successfully over in Portland. They probably are playing the exact same 60. There could be some different minor changes, but this is the Roaring Moon list that they currently were rocking with, with uh, Professor's Research as the main draw supporter. Only two Sala in here, because most of the time it's going to be Attachment, Dark Patch, E-Switch combo, because Galarian Moltres stitches us all together. Emergency Jelly, very great. Also against Charizard, where you're frenzied gouging a Charizard, and then you heal back up, which means they cannot respond with a little Charmander, which is very good. That means they need to respond with another two-prizer, and you see how quickly you can run away with games. So, uh, yeah, it could be a little bit different, as mentioned, but Roaring Moon definitely made a, a name for itself in this exact 60. We will be seeing more similar Roaring Moon list as we go along. Russell Montero with uh, Lost Stone Tira. Lost Stone Giratina has seen the best uh, yeah, results lately in the couple of regionals that have happened the last two. So we do see they are playing Drapion instead of Spirit Tomb for Mew Max. As you all know, Mew Max is uh, Lost Stone Giratina's uh, hardest matchup because they can easily pick apart your Tinas before they're able to evolve. And they also have the disruption by the side with some uh, yeah disruptive tools like Judge Path, etc. So this list is also running the Avery here. So uh, Avery seems to be coming a mainstay. Was a great probably for this tournament. It seems like a great pick here, this Avery. And uh, that is like three Tinas in the top eight. That's kind of ridiculous. The biggest surprise for me is that Roaring Moon made a name for itself. And also that the conversion rate of um, Maridon wasn't all that great. Also, the only Charizard in top 16 that I think about it was Caleb Rogerson with uh, Arvinzar. So that's also something to note down from this tournament. Uh, Makani Tran uh, back at it with the Arceus and Regigigas. So Arceus is still alive in this format. If you've been sleeping under a rock, we have been testing this list out before on the channel as well. And uh, they added in the Mawal here for some additional trapping uh, against specific archetypes. It's probably useful against stuff like Gardevoir where you're just tempting trap. And then you can pick up some uh, cards like uh, with Charon's Care. So Mawal is the only Pokemon in play. And then uh, you have more cards in your deck left than your opponent. And then suddenly you win against Gardevoir. So that's a pretty cool inclusion. Might also keep the opponents off guard like uh, decks that have run out of switch cards. When you see that, you can activate the Mawal here. This is uh, something we've seen before where you're using Arcus V-Star. Use Star Birth to uh, stitch it all together. And uh, yeah, Regigigas V-Star has a high amount of HP, which is able to uh, survive uh, specific hits. Uh, more in particular, I would say that uh, I think it actually survives uh, the Charizard attack when you have like not when you're taking one prize card they cannot one shot you because they're slapping like 210 even with vitality ban they cannot slap down the big HP of the Regigigas V 
With that being said, you have a, a couple of support Pokemon, Spiritomb for the Mew VMAX, and this is a 3-3 three, three line of B-Barrel, so a lot of emphasis on the B-Barrel, not two copies of Charon, just one, and uh, they just want to get into the game more uh, efficiently. There is, of course, the uh, Box of Disaster in here, which definitely helps out against Gardevoir. So, uh, yeah, I wonder how this list will perform moving forward, because it looks very, very uh, interesting. There's Calvin Connor, of course, uh, back at it with the Snorlax block. And uh, this time around, they uh, didn't go for Pidgeot EX. Uh, they just went for the classic build with four Snorlax, Rotom V, Pidgeot V, Mimikyu, and Spiritomb. Some, something we've seen before. I think it was at the Gdansk Regionals where this archetype was able to win it all. There's four copies of the Temple of Sinnoh. Usually with only C3 copies, but you do want to win that Stadium War. Definitely against uh, Giratina where the Jet Energies are the main problem. So the main focus of the deck is making sure the opponent is trapped in the active position so they deck out. You have Misfortune Sisters to discard switches, switch guard, uh, escape rope, switch, etc. Also stuff like Palpat because some people are running Turo which they can reuse with Palpat so the Misfortune Sister uh, also cutting away on that resource is very good. Uh, in my Snorlax block that I was playtesting with um, during the Stuttgart Regionals, I actually was playing four Misfortune Sisters, so there was that. Uh, I actually stepped away from Snorlax block because even with four Temple of Sinnoh, I think your loss on Giratina matchup is just horrendously so bad. Uh, but you can still run away with games. If uh, you see the right opponents, you see the right decks, uh, you can definitely win a tournament with Snorlax block. All the rest of the cards are very self-explanatory. There is the Luxury Escape, which can definitely help if you put that on the Mimikyu to even win against stuff like the wacky Iron Valiant Ante decks running around here and there. You trap opponents in the opponent's hand if you see it with Erika. You can just uh, grab the basics and slap them on the bench. If they are hiding in a discard pile, you can use Echoing Horn and you can make some space open. Uh, I think this list is actually not running the Avery if I'm seeing it here. So uh, yeah, no Avery in this list. They opted to go for three copies of Iono though. So is that better? Maybe, uh, because if you Iono the opponent uh, breaks for a couple of turns, you have more chances to use Misfortune Sister. So I could see it in that regard. So. Very interesting. So, uh, high amount of Iono here. I probably would cut down on Iono for an Avery because Avery with Echoing Horn is just such a broken combo to use. Moving forward, uh, Raymond Long with uh, Gardevoir. This Gardevoir is playing the Cresselia, so uh, very good against Lost Box. Still all of Lost Box in format. Two copies of Avery in here as well. And uh, yeah, it seems like most of the list. I want to see here if the Gustavo Wada also played VIP passes. Yeah, most of the successful Gardevoir list are, of course, playing VIP pass. But I've seen like... Uh, like Mirage that builds like without VIP pass the VIP pass less uh, Guard of our decks are also kind of good because you have more space for specific deck cards with that being said They have access to four uh, stadium bumps with vacuum two artisan and collapse Collapse is also super nice to of course get rid of a damaged Pokemon uh, Something like a station you slap into a lost box then you collapse it away later So they don't take any prize cards definitely something that could happen here So again two counter catchers seem to be the norm and four Iono so yeah, it's a classic Guardi for you. Moving forward, uh, 12 list is a, a DTE Mew list. I don't have the list currently. Unfortunately, is it a DTE? Could it also be Fusion, but it looks to be like a DTE list to me. Uh, the list will become available very shortly on Limbless, TCG.com or on PTCGLegends.com. With that being said, Joe Turrentine with... Uh, yes, here we go. Arceus V-Star with Regigigas and a bunch of one-off uh, energies. That makes the opponent really think, what are they playing? So if you have like Grass Energy onto Arceus, they might, they might totally play differently. So they have the full face guard in here as well, which is actually pretty interesting. You can equip that to Pokemon that don't have uh, an ability, but with the high amount of path, you shut down your ability. So there is that. So full face guard, 20 less damage done to you. So could that survive specific hits? Yes, it can definitely survive against uh, Lost Zone Giratina. The path will still stick around. They don't have a way to bump path, which means full face guard is in full effect. <laughs> See where we're going with this. So uh, Lost Impact actually is not dishing it out the enough damage. You do have V Guard energy, which also protects you against Lost Impact, but uh, Giratina was uh, focused on, but still was able to dominate uh, three slots into the top eight. But this is a list only playing a 2-2 B barrel line, having the Spirit Tomb for Mew V Max, two Charon Scare, and just instead of playing a lot of like psychic energies and going for a Zacian V, they opted to go for like all different kinds of basic energies to troll around, but that's just hilarious to see. It makes the opponent really doubt what are they playing. Uh, Julio uh, Santos de Leon, uh, also playing Roaring Moon. We currently don't have the list. Daniel Fab. Piano uh, is playing Iron Valiant with Entei. Yes, this deck is always around, but people are thinking, always say like there are two camps. 
this deck is incredibly broken or this deck is uh, garbage. And uh, I am in between because I think when you're seeing the correct uh, matchups, this deck can run away with a tournament as well. Iron Valiant here being able to donk uh, opponents. Let's say the opponent just flips over or else with 60 HP. Memory skip one and then uh, you go first. You use, uh, there's even two squack abilities in here. So very uh, reliant on the turn one donk capability with the tachyon bit which switching around you can donk opponents before they're even having a turn and if you go second you can have a turn one yoga loop uh, with of course two forest seal stone and two double turbo energies you will definitely find that high amount of research in here as well so uh this is a list I still need to like perfectionize, uh, to be honest, because it's a hard deck to play, but at one point this actually might win another tournament. Blake Uri with another Roaring Moon, so in total that is three Roaring Moons in the top 16. Uh, nothing we've ever seen before, so uh, that's actually the first top 8 uh, for Roaring Moon ever since it came out in Paradox Rift, so definitely something to note down. Uh, now we're taking a look at the top 32. Are there any interesting builds? We haven't seen any Mew VMAX, so might as well check out uh, James Hart's list here. It is a DTE uh, version of Mew, but there is one fusion energy in here, just to make sure if you are up against something like, uh, let's say, a Spirit Tomb, you can just use the Chromomatic, get the fusion energy and start drawing at least a couple of uh, cards with one fusion strike system so uh, there's a, some minor protection against uh yeah spirit tomb coming in your way but it's a disruptive build uh, also playing lost city by the way so not uh high on this um on the path to the peak alone there was like and most of these ZTE lists, you see like three or four paths, but this is only playing two paths, and uh, they are actually playing two Box of Disaster, so they were really favored into Guard of War, but Guard of War wasn't all that popular. Okay, we have uh, Grand Haze with um, Maridon. There's also like uh, Meng Yu Wang with this. Uh, yeah, very similar to Alex Shemansky's 60 that we've seen with uh, Sable Zard. There's uh, John Eng again with... Uh, he actually won at their last regional, so that's actually crazy to see him convert that well. Uh, with Lostina, there's uh, Grand Haze with Maridon and 16 energies Peony build. I, I prefer more energies because the list I have been playing with, the, the list I got like 4th place, actually so high rolly, also on the Pokemon catcher and stuff, this actually is a, a deck I prefer way better with more energies so your electric generators hit more often. And Super Rods. A Super Rod and a Peony list is so great because sometimes you throw away too many energies and uh, you can Super Rod and then use Generator to make sure you are going to hit. And also it's using Raikou with the other... Maridon list wasn't uh, using Raikou at all. Alex Crackler with uh, Urshifu. You also see that in the top 32. Uh, there was another uh, Gardevoir with Andres David Torres. Uh, yeah, they're playing the Mew EX. That's kind of cute. That can actually copy paste attacks when the opponent least expects it. And they're playing two copies of the Pokemon League headquarters. Which deck are they really punishing with that? Uh, probably the last box. Like you can Pokemon League Headquarters and then slap down a good old classic Iono and maybe they are not able to respond, which is gonna be super cool for sure. That means sometimes they need an extra Mirage Gate, which is hilarious. Uh, yeah, there is Paul Margold with another Arvinzard. Seems to be, yeah, this is playing Defiance Band over the Choice Belt. So I don't know which camp you are. Vitality Band, Defiance Band, Choice Belt. They are just damage modifiers to help uh, Charizard out with his big damage output. David Zhang with uh, another Arvin Zart here, this time Choice Bell, so people cannot make up their minds which, uh, and they're actually, most of these lists are only playing six energies. They are of course playing uh, two copies of Super Rod, but just something to note down when they're burned down to a lot of resources. And the first top 32, I suppose, maybe I'm wrong, uh, for Goldango Palkia with Jared Gumila, so cool to see. Uh, this is actually very similar to the list that uh, did well in the Kyoto Champions League, but they added in the constant Cologne, as I suggested, with a list like this. You definitely should include, include that one copy of Cologne because you are playing Palkia Vistar, you're, pl you're playing Green Angel, so you're probably obligated to do that. So uh, Goldango here making a name for itself. So that's pretty much uh, the run through for today's video. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at some more lists as we uh, use them in a battle video. So, um, and of course, Liverpool Regionals coming up uh, this weekend. I'll be playing as well. I'm very, very excited to see all of you guys once more. And uh, I hopefully will be able to lock in my world invite uh, by the end of this tournament because I only need 41 more championship points to round up my invite. So that's going to be super excited. Hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't work, 
gonna be the next thing two weeks from that there's Dortmund regionals in Germany as well anyhow have yourself a fantastic rest of your day thanks for joining in today for some analysis of the Charlotte regionals the biggest regionals we've seen in the Western world go check out my sponsors as well there is of course Dragon Shield the best brand to protect your beautiful cards you can get 5% off on everything on the website so definitely use that link down below they are very great for sleeves binders deck boxes you name it or use the coupon Zapdos5 that also works as well and uh, there is yourplaymat.com to create your own custom playmat from scratch nothing is uh, has a better feeling than playing on your own unique custom playmat upload your favorite wallpaper or design and they turn it into a beautiful playmat they ship worldwide and you can get 10% off today by clicking that link down below there is uh, of course cardmarket.com for European players use of course the referral name ZabluSTCG there to help support the channel it's for European players a platform to buy and sell cards to people all across Europe that's pretty much it and then there is potownstore.com the best place for TCG live code cards you can of course use the coupon code ZabluSTCG for 5% off over on everything on potownstore.com from promos to the latest booster packs around have yourself a fantastic rest of the day I'll see you guys tomorrow for more brand new Pokemon TCG adventures and I'll see you guys then peace